now his life is bad because all the houses is darkness. Welcome to That place we living together six months. Learning by doing, doing by learning. Something iron. Yeah, difficult job, but I will try to be. Oni chagua wana wake kwa sababu hii kazi ya wana wake. Sasa ya wana. Hawawezi wakakolofisha kazi wakapeleka kwingine. Ila wanaume wanaweza wakakolofisha wakapeleka kwa wana wake wa nje. Ebile must be practice and practice, practice up to six months. I think that our mind is good and clear. I'm a yes. Anaskia, anaskia, na anaona, na mdomo waki anaweza kusema, unamfamisha kitu kwa, kwa kukilinganisha hichi kitu fulani, anakiona na kinaitua hivi, na kinafanya hivi, kina kwa nilahisi kumfamisha mtu ambaye, anasema. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to the most expensive elitist, snobbish school and college in India. Almost destroyed me. <laughs> I went to a village for the first time in 1965, and it shocked me, because I didn't know my own country. And I went to a famine, and I saw hunger, starvation, death for the first time. It really shook me, and I came back home, and I told my mother, I think I'd like to live and work in a village. Mother went into a coma. <laughs> she said, what is this all about, you know? You're becoming a doctor, teacher, engineer, lawyer. Everything is laid out. You went to such a snobbish school. <laughs> what do you want to do with, in a village? I said, I want to be an unskilled laborer digging wells in Rajasthan. <laughs> Didn't speak to me for many years. Because she said, I'd let my family down. What was I going to tell the family that you are going to become an unskilled laborer? I said, I want to see what this country is like because this is a country I've never seen, my own country. So for five years, I dug wells as an unskilled laborer. And I was exposed to the most extraordinary knowledge and skills that very poor people have. And then I said, I thought I'd like to start a college only for the poor. And that's when I called it the Barefoot College. Because the Barefoot College reflects the knowledge, skills, and wisdom of very poor people all over the world you never recognize, you don't respect, you devalue. And we thought we'd bring this knowledge, skill, and wisdom to mainstream. So we went about bringing some unique features in the Barefoot College. First, we said, anyone with a degree and qualification, master's or a PhD would be disqualified to come. You have to be a dropout or a cop-out or a washout <laughs> to come to the college. Second, you had to, dignity of, dignity of labor was very important. What Mahatma Gandhi said, live simply so others can simply live. So that is how the college started very small. And we said, what Mark Twain said, never let school interfere with your education. School is where you learn how to read and write. Education is what you get from your family, from your environment, and from your community. So we set about showing that just because you are illiterate, it doesn't mean you cannot become a solar engineer, you cannot become a water engineer, you can't become a communicator, you can't become an architect. So we went about proving 
that it was possible. So the Barefoot College was built by someone who still can't read and write today. But then we, it was the first college to be fully solar electrified. And we went about, and it was a Hindu priest who solar electrified the village. And then we went, the whole approach was to demystify and decentralize solar electrification right down to the community level. And we came up with an extraordinary solution. When we solar electrified most of the villages in India, when we went abroad. But we came up with an extraordinary solution. We said, you know what is the most powerful way of communicating today? Is it television? Is it telephone? Is it telegraph? It's tell a woman. <laughs> so we went about solar electrifying villages, which are non-electrified, remote, inaccessible, all over the world. And we chose grandmothers. Grandmothers who can't read and write. Grandmothers who've never been to school and college. And with an extraordinary partnership with the government of India, every grandmother we chose was flown by the government of India to the college. And in six months, these grandmothers learned through sign language how to be a solar engineer. And they, they came as grandmothers and went back like tigers. <laughs> they solar electrified the village without any help from outside. And today, there are 700 grandmothers in 70 countries around the world who have been trained in the Barefoot College in eight years. As a result of that, the government of India came and said, why don't you start Barefoot Colleges in other parts of Africa? So there are five, six Barefoot Colleges all over Africa. Tanzania, Burkina Faso, Liberia, Senegal, and South Sudan. And in South Sudan is the place where we need it the most. The government of India has given us some money, but we need to top it up. All these grandmothers come, 40 of them, as you saw in the photograph, all sitting together, all chatting with each other, but not understanding a word. Because they're all speaking French or Spanish or Jola or Wolof, but the body language is great. And they all speak and they chatter, chatter, chatter. And within six months, they know more about solar engineering than any graduate after five years of university. They have the capacity and competence to be able to set up a system, install it, fabricate it, repair it, and maintain it. And all these grandmothers are extraordinary. So South Sudan is one of those countries which have been neglected, marginalized, and this is a country which has the face is the largest challenge for us. You have eight grandmothers from there, and they are extraordinary. But we need the support to be able to build this Barefoot College so that we can add more people, more grandmothers in that country. Now, I'll end with a small story. We had one failure from Benin. The grandmothers went back, and after a month, I got this extraordinary telegram saying, grandmothers have forgotten everything. And in one month, the Minister of Education is going to come, the environment is coming, it's going to solar electrify this village. What are we going to do? So in that same course that the two grandmothers had come, there was a battle axe of a grandmother from Mauritania. <laughs> and we flew the battle axe of a grandmother from Mauritania <laughs> all the way to Benin. And the moment these two grandmothers from Benin saw this battle axe, they remembered everything. <laughs> and they solar electrified the first village. We had a visit of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Came for the, came for the first time, saw the college, saw the grandmothers, and he said something which still remains. He said, now that you have shown the Barefoot College working in practice, let's see if the professors and experts can make it work in theory. <laughs> We've done everything wrong. And yet it seems to work. So I'll end with a quotation of Mahatma Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Thank you.
one question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My mom was a very snobbish woman. <laughs> and she only started speaking to me when the Prince and Princess of Wales came to the Barefoot College. <laughs> Last time they were seen together was the Barefoot College. <laughs> Is that all? Any more? College has educated thousands of women in India at your original center. Can you explain to us the importance of place-based training? Why is it important to go, for instance, to South Sudan and create a center there instead of bringing them back to India? The most important thing is to bring the woman out of her habitat and to make them mix, work together with people from other countries who are like-minded in the same situation so that they get a feeling of solidarity. That is the most important thing to bring and they spend, when they spend six months in the Barefoot College. And they feel, first of all, you know, our mobile bills are the largest in the first month because all the grandmothers are ringing back home saying, God, where have you bought me? I don't know how to read and write. I can't see the language. I can't speak for six months. Where the hell have you got me? I want to go back home. So first month is a month of settling them down. Second and third month, they've thrived. They blossom, and they become leaders, and they pick up new skills. They're not only doing solar, but they're learning how to make chalk. They're learning how to make mosquito nets. They're learning how to make sanitary pad units. They're learning how to become, invisibly, an entrepreneur. So when they go back, they're not only solar engineers. They're also trainers. And they are role models for the young girls in that village. For the first time, they see their grandmother, who's actually an endangered species today, becoming um, a woman who has, who's respected highly in her own village. So this has become, and if someone keeps on saying, why don't you send them, why don't you send a trainer to that place? It's not the same as taking her out. Look at the guts she has. First time getting onto a village, first time getting into a plane, 19 hours in a plane, landing in the middle of Delhi, in the middle of midnight, <laughs> six hours they have to go by jeep to the Barefoot College, and not one peep. They've still got the guts to stay there for six months and go through the course. Unbelievable guts, unbelievable.